we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if you walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleaneth us from all sins. If he say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have no, not sinned, we have made him a lie, and his word is not in us. I read to you the first chapter. Stay in our heart all day long. 
word of Jesus. For Jesus is all in all. Lord, we thank you and we praise your name. And Lord, we ask that you will bless the ones out there on the weekend. That out there on them, thank you, highway and byway, and highway and wherever they may be, Father. That you will bless them, put down on them, protect them, keep them all from hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen, Father. And the ones not here on today, Father, we know the reason why. But Lord, you know it all, Father God. But Lord, we are so grateful and thankful how you love us so much. Lord, we can't give you enough praise, Lord. We had 10,000 turns. Turn. We can't praise you enough. But Lord, we just ask that you continue to bless us and we continue to call on your name and continue to do your will and continue to serve you, Lord. Because that that's what it's all about. Lord, we love you. And Lord, we ask that you will bless our church. Look down on the committee, Father God. Touch their heart, Father God. Let them know, Father God, that, that, that this is God's business. And Lord, let us be about your business, Father God, not what we think is right or what we think is wrong. But Lord, let us not leave our own understanding, but your understanding, according to your word, Father. And Lord, we be so careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. This is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. That concludes our devotion. By way of welcome, do we have any first time visitors? Any first time visitors? So we're all family. Well, I'd like to welcome you anyway to our service. You could have gone anyplace else and you could have been doing something else, but you chose to come here to be in Union Missionary Baptist Church, and for that we are grateful. By way of announcement, on September 13th, we will be having a church conference. So uh, tell a neighbor, tell a friend, call them, chat with them, text them, and tell them to come out on, okay, I, I've just been told it's the 14th, not the 13th. So the 14th of September, please come out for our church conference. We're going to have, we're going to ask uh, Sister Juanita Green to come up and introduce our guest minister. After that, we're going to ask um, Brother Power to give us a song, a congregational song, and then the next voice that you will hear will be that of our guest minister. So in that order.
under the covering of Bishop Marvin Bradshaw, Sr., followed by Reverend Dr. Mamie Bridgeford. Pastor Bart not only preached the gospel, but used his prior experience to demonstrate that he served leadership to minister, lay persons, and members in order to help the church be a real life body ministry as well as develop spiritual leaders who carry out the great commission of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This anointing and experience has given him an ability to help the young, new Christians, and those seasoned in Christ to prepare, to prepare for, adapt to, and experience transformation spiritually, economically, professionally, and socially in accordance to the Lord. One of his favorite scriptures is, Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is not good and acceptable and perfect the will of God. In addition to a bachelor's degree in human services, which was specialty in administrative justice from Thomas Edison State University, located in Trent, New Jersey, Pastor Hart also has earned an associate's degree in criminal justice from SS County College, located in Newark, New Jersey. Future plans are to pursue a fully accredited master's degree in ministry at Liberty Baptist Seminary with a concentration in Christian counseling. Reverend Hart is married to the love of his life, Janice Hart, and he has recently relocated back to uh, Bible New he is the proud father of two beautiful daughters, Rose and Trinity Hart. And he is the son of the late Charlie J. and Eloise Hart. So, good evening, if you would, after the selection, give a warm welcome and greet Pastor Gerard Hart. Good morning. Good morning. If you will, please, if you're able to stand, please stand and join us. Sing him 191, glory to his name.
God is good. All the time. And he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Real quickly, can we just give God a great big hand clap for the things that he has done? Somebody might be saying, well, what has he done? Well, he woke you up this morning. Started you on your way. May death behave and leave you alone. Amen. That's enough right there to give God some praise in this house. God is good and he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Give an honor to God who is the head of my life. Thanking him for what he is going to do and what he has already done. Amen. I thank God for life, health, and strength. Amen. I thank God for the opportunity to be here one more time. Amen. If I said it like Grandmama used to say, it, since we're here, one more game. Let's give God all that we got. Amen. Let's give God all the praise and all the worship. Amen. Because He is deserving of it. Amen. Video team back there, we thank God for you, amen. Uh, I thank God for my granddaughter that is here, Riley, amen. She's the one going up and down the pews right there. We thank God for her. And uh, 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 last but not least, I thank God for the apple of my eye. I thank God for my Nefertiti. I thank God for my queen, amen. I thank God for my peanut butter jelly sandwich, amen. So we certainly thank God for her, amen. We thank God for her being here, for without her, it would be no me, amen. So we're just happy to be in the house one more time, amen. I am excited about being here, and I come here with the expectation of, 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 of God to show up, amen. How many people come here expecting something, amen? How many expecting a word, amen? I don't know about you, I don't know into the church house and leave out just as bad as I felt when I walked in the door, amen? I need something that's going to sustain me and to help me and to take me through the week, amen? To get me to the other side, amen? Because you may not know, you may be going through some stuff, amen? So we need to be energized, amen? And the only way that we can be energized is in the beloved, amen? So we certainly thank God for this day that he has given us, amen? And we should not take it lightly that we are here for very easily. could have been the other way, amen? It could have been you down and out. It could have been you sick. It could have been you in someone's ICC unit, amen? Or even worse, it could have been you lying in someone's funeral home, amen? But because of grace and mercy, amen, he's allowed us to assemble in this place one more time, amen? Exactly what he wants and desires, and that is the praise and the worship. Amen. Is there a word from God? Yes, there is. Amen. As I always say, I will not be long, but I will be strong. Amen. Is that all right? Um, this um, morning's message will be coming from the book of Psalms. Amen. We're going to go to Psalms 100. Amen. Uh, I like Psalms. Amen. We're going to go to Psalms 100 and we're going to be reading verses 1 through 5. Amen. When you have it, say, I got it. If not, say, hold up. Amen. Psalms 1. And I like the Psalms, amen, because the Psalms starts out kind of dreary, right? By the end of that thing, amen, you start to feel a little bit better, amen? So we're going to read Psalms 100, verses 1 through 5, beginning at verse 1. And it reads as thus. Make a joyful noise. To the Lord, all ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth enduring to all generations. May the Lord add a blessing to his most holy and sanctified word. 
real quickly, I want to talk about serving the Lord with gladness. Amen. Serving the Lord with gladness. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. are you serving the Lord serving with gladness? Yes. Okay, that was the wrong neighbor. Amen. Look at the other neighbor. Amen. Neighbor, the neighbor. are you serving, are you serving the, Lord the Lord with gladness? Yes. Let us pray. Spirit of the loving God, Father, we come this morning just saying thank you. Realizing, Father, if it had not been for you, we would be lost. We've had the worship. We've had the Bible reading. We've had the singing. But now it's preaching time. I have studied, but I need your strength. I have prepared, but I need your presence. And I have prayed, but I need your power. And right now, God, I ask that you would hide me behind the cross. Cover me with thy blood. I ask for the kind of anointing that makes preaching easy. Loose my stammering tongue so your people may hear and receive the living word. I ask all of this in your name. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Serving the Lord with gladness. Church, there are a couple of things that I believe. I believe that if you are a child of the King, that you have a joy that the world did not give you. And the world cannot take away. I believe that when the praises go up, the blessings come down. I believe that if you go to God with a sincere prayer request, that God has to show up for his namesake. So therefore, I believe that every now and then, the people of the Lord should praise the name of the Lord. From time to time, there should be some joy and there should be some praise. The people of God ought to give him the glory sometime. If he woke you up this morning and started you on your way, there should be some praise and there should be some joy. If you are able to put one foot in front of the other and walk without assistance, there should be some praise and there should be some joy. If you are standing on the top side of the grave this morning, there should be some praise and there should be some joy. If you have a reasonable good portion of health, and I did say reasonable, there should be some praise and there should be some joy. Again, for it very easily could have been the other way, but thank God that it's not. I know life is hard and I know burdens are heavy. I know that there is trouble everywhere. I know that sickness is all around us and death stalks the land, but nonetheless, sometimes we ought to praise God anyhow. In spite of how I feel, we should give him some praise. In spite of insurmountable obstacles, we should give him some praise. In spite of things not being the best, we should give him some praise. For Romans 8 28 still says that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Amen? So what that means is that my bad and my good are intertwined together for the expected outcome of great. Amen? So that bad stuff, that good stuff, God uses, amen, to build us and to move us. Amen? And sometimes God has to do some stuff to us in order to make us move. Amen? Some of y'all wouldn't pray if nothing happened to you. Amen? Some of y'all wouldn't God to heal your body if you never get sick, amen? Some of, some of y'all would never pray if nothing ever happened to you. But God says, serve me with gladness. And the one thing that I've learned uh, uh, been in union is, that union is that you do not praise God because life is good. You praise God because he is good. No matter what's wrong in your life, no matter what's lacking in your world, God is still worthy to be praised. Saints, there is never any excuse or any justification for not praising God. Amen? There never is anything to blame or any more to fault for not praising God. Hypocrites in the church does not take away from the goodness of God's word. Scoundrels in the pulpit does not negate the truth of God's word. The Lord is worthy to be praised. Amen? When I look back over my life and I see what God has brought me from, I can boldly stand before you in the shoes of John and tell you all that he's been good. Amen? If you knew my story, you'd understand my praise. Amen? When I think about how God has always been there for me, amen? Even in my darkest time, amen? I have no alternative to 
to uh, make a union, union, but to give them the praise. If you knew my story, you would understand my praise. If you knew my struggles, you would understand my praise. But if you, if more importantly, if you knew how God delivered me out of this darkness into this marvelous light, you would understand my praise. The people of God ought to give God some praise sometime. Amen? You need to give God a hand clap sometime. Amen? Now let me just make this perfectly clear, Benny Union. I didn't come here uh, 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 to beg y'all, to praise y'all, or to push y'all, or to cry y'all, to praise God. For someone here should just take a memory. For you look back over your life and see what God has brought you from. You should have been down and out, but you're still here. Pouring my t-shirt, taking you out last year, but you're, but you're still here. Amen. For somebody, you should just take a memory. For you to praise God, to say, Lord, you've done it when I didn't know how I would make it. Lord, you came through when my child was acting crazy. Lord, now you just helped me and you pushed that thing all the way to the end and you came through. Didn't know how you would go, but I know that you would do it. If you knew my story, you understand my praise. The people of God ought to serve the Lord with gladness. The sheep of his pasture ought to have gladness in their hearts. The redeemed of the Lord ought to have dancing in their feet, a song on their lips. You ought to serve the Lord with gladness. Sometimes, however, a simple request can be the most difficult to fulfill. Often what God would have us to do is easy to understand, but yet difficult to accomplish. Amen? Many times our problem is not uh, with uh, understanding God, it's being obedient to God's word. Amen? It's really not that we can't comprehend. We're just too stubborn to give in. Amen? Uh, we often know what God wants. is just difficult to live in. Our problem is not always an ability to hear. It's a struggle to perform. Amen? We don't do it because we clearly understand that we are not doing it. Amen? Sometimes a simple request is the most difficult to fulfill. What we have in this text. The psalmist wants us to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. He wants us to serve him with gladness. He wants to come before his presence with singing. Now that simple church makes some make some noise, sing some songs, and be glad about it. Amen. You don't need a PhD to figure that thing out. Amen. The, the psalmist is telling us what to do and how to do it. He gives us the acts of worship and the attitude of worship. Amen. Saints, I tell you, it sounds simple, but down through the years, we've made it difficult. Amen. It's easier for most of us to come to church than it is to have church. Amen. It's easier to hear a choir than to have your own song. Amen. It's easier to criticize the preacher than to say amen to the gospel. Amen. It's easier to sit in a pew than to stand up your feet and be a witness. Amen. We don't find it easy to serve the Lord with gladness. Or we'll serve with a grudge and an attitude, but no gladness. Amen. Or we'll serve out of spite and envy, but no gladness. Or we'll serve to be seen and praised, but no gladness. Or we'll serve if it's convenient and easy, but no gladness. We know what to do, but for some reason we just don't do it. But the text says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Now, I don't care what you say. The psalmist has ruled out a quiet church. The psalmist is saying that when the people of God get together, there should be some noise. Okay, let me try it here. The psalmist is saying that when the people of God get together in one place at one time, there ought to be some noise. Okay, let me keep it over here. Thomas is saying that the people of God get together in one place at one time on one accord that there ought to be some noise. The psalmist is saying that we look back over your life and see what God has brought you from. There ought to be some noise. No one should have to beg you or cry you to give God the praise. Amen. The psalmist is saying just look back and think. Amen. At those times when you were in distress and he came through. Amen. We should serve the Lord with gladness. The psalmist is saying that when you look back over your life, there should be somebody in here should be making some noise. When you're thinking about when you were lost and he found you, you should be making some noise. When you're thinking about when you were sick and you couldn't get well and he healed your body, you should be making some noise. Amen. When you're thinking about 
by his grace and mercy, uh, you should be making some noise. And I just wonder if there's anybody here uh, at Bennett Union that has a reason uh, to make some noise. Uh, I just wonder if there's anybody here uh, that has anything to thank God for. Uh, it wasn't you that woke your own self up. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that has a reason? Uh, he woke you up this morning and started you in your way. Uh, make some noise. Uh,
since I've been serving the Lord with gladness, uh, things are much better for me. Uh, he's opened doors uh, that no man can shut. Uh, I found in him uh, a resting place, uh, and he has made me glad. Uh, when I was down, uh, he picked me up. Uh, when I was lost, uh, he came looking for me. Uh, when I was down and out, uh, he brought me in. Uh, when I was on my way to hell, uh, stopped me in my tracks, uh, turned me around, uh, placed my feet uh, on solid ground. Uh, and every now and then, uh, I got to thank him. Uh, every now and then, uh, I got to jump up and down. Uh, every now and then, uh, I got to wave holy hands. Uh, every now and then, uh, I got to get real ugly for him uh, because he's been so good. Uh, he's been so kind. Uh, say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Serving the Lord with gladness. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you've you been told. You continue to serve the Lord with gladness. This morning we talked about in Sunday school the unbroken promises of God. Amen. Sometimes God doesn't tell us the whole story. Sometimes God will give us a particular assignment without no particular place to go. Amen. And this is when the faith factor kicks in. Amen. But it's during that time, amen, that we have to serve the Lord with gladness when we can't figure it out. We have to serve the Lord with gladness when you don't understand what he's doing. I said this morning in Sunday school that sometimes we call on God and it's quiet. He doesn't answer. But I want to remind someone here this morning uh, that the classroom is always quiet during the test. Amen. God is doing his best work when you can't feel him. God is doing his best work when there is no presence of him. Amen. Keep on serving the Lord with gladness. Uh, keep on coming to the church house with gladness. Uh, keep on saying the Lord's going to make a way with gladness. Uh, we're not concerned about who is here, who was here, who want to be here. Keep on coming to the church house, amen. And God's going to do it, amen. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you down. I will never leave you vacant, amen. I always be there in the midst of your trials and tribulations, amen. I don't know who I'm talking to. This morning, but someone needs to understand right now through your trial, you have to push your way through it, and you have to praise your way through it, and you have to keep on giving God the praise in the midst of the storm, amen. And see, when you do this, it confuses the enemy, amen. Uh, the enemy is saying, Well, why are they praising God and they ain't got no job? Why are they praising God when they ain't got no money in their pocket? But you don't know that the joy that I have. I know that God's going to come through some. I know that God's going to do it. Uh, if he doesn't do it today, he'll do it tomorrow. Uh, if he doesn't do it tomorrow, he'll do it next week. Uh, if he doesn't do it next week, he'll do it next month. Uh, but whenever he does it, it's all right with me. So you keep on praising him and serving him with gladness. And if you do that, God's going to show up. If you do that, God's going to come and see about us. If we do that, God's going to show up for his namesake. Amen? Y'all give God a great big hand of God. Amen? So the thing is that he has done it. Amen? The simple word, serving the Lord with gladness. We are to stay glad, but never to show the enemy our hand. Amen? Keep on smiling. Can't smile, amen. And then keep on, keep, keep on having positive thoughts when you feel like you don't want to have positive thoughts. Serve the Lord with gladness, and everything will be all right, amen. Been in union, keep on doing what you're doing, amen. God is doing His best work right now. God is doing His best work right now. We don't even see it or feel it. God is doing His best work right now. But what you have to do, you have to start thinking God right now for what He's going to do. You have to start thinking, God, right now, whether pews are going to be packed. You have to start thinking, God, right now, whether there's not going to be enough room in the park. And you have to think, start thinking, God, right now, for God to put things back on track. Amen? And he'll do it because God.
God, his word is good. And it will stand forever. Amen. And then, so with that, we are done here. Amen. Uh, may heaven smile upon you. And may God um, bless you real good. Amen. And right now, we're going to set our hearts and minds um, on one accord as we go into this most holy and sanctified um, well, um, memorial memory service um, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the communion. Amen. Is, is that all right? Okay. Amen. So as we get our hearts and minds.
shed on Calvary's hill for the remission of all sin, and they drank together. Thank you. 